All right, guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to talk a little more about the graph editor, specifically the F curve modifier and the built in function sign. Now, be prepared to be blown away with my amazing animation skills. So, let me just move this up here so we can see. And what I'll do is I'll enable auto keyframing and I'll go to the move tool and we'll select the box. Now, you can see here on the transform dialog box, if we just click, it will set a keyframe. So on frame 30, what I'm going to do is move the z-axis up by 3 meters, And on frame 60, I'll drop it back down to 0. Now we'll take a quick look at the animation. And the circus, eat your heart out. So how can we utilize the graph editor? Now hopefully you've seen the previous video that I've made. If not, link's in the description. And it shows you how to set up your workspace. So I've set up a graph editor workspace. Essentially, I have the graph editor here, dope sheet here, and a perspective window. Now, I want to be able to repeat this function. So, we could be lazy and we could select all the keyframes in a dope track. And we could paste them in. And that will give us this repeating function. So, something like this. But it's maybe not the best method. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down the object transform and display the channels in the graph editor. Now, we're only interested in the Z location. So what we can do is we can right click, move to top, and that bumps the channel right up to the top. Now, a lot of 3D applications don't have this functionality, so kudos to Blender in that regard. Another thing we can do is we can select the X location, press the B key for box select, and we'll select the rest. And if we right click, we can group channels. Now you can see here it's called new group, so if you double click, and we can name it to something like unused. Let me just expand it down. So why is this important? Well, it's always a good idea to sort out your workflow. The cleaner your workflow, the more productive you generally are. But the reason I like doing it is I can actually hide the channels. And it means that the graph editor is a lot cleaner. So I'll select the Z location. And what I'm going to do is add the F curve modifier. So if we come up to the menu, go to key, you'll see it here. Add F curve modifier and we'll use the built in function. Now you can already see that it's oscillating, so we'll just take a look. It's actually using the sign function. Now we'll bring up the properties for the modifier. So if you press the N key, you jump to the modifiers tab. You can see it here, sign. Now I want the box to be 3 meters high, so most people are thinking put the amplitude up to 3, but that won't work. What you're doing is you're actually getting 3 in the plus and 3 in the negative value. In theory, the box is travelling 6 metres. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to half the amplitude to 1.5. And I'm going to do a value offset of 1.5. Now you can see that it's corrected it. It's now bouncing off 0 and it's bouncing off 3. Now, we can control the spacing using the phase multiplier. So at the moment it's a bit quick, so I'll drop the phase multiplier down to yeah, it's 0 0.1. That is pretty good. And then we'll get this automated sign function. Now, you can restrict the frame range, so maybe you only want it to go to frame 120. Then you'll get this. But we'll take this off and we'll just put it back. And that's pretty much how you use the F-curve modifier. Play around with the functions, some of them are pretty good, like if you want to do maybe like a rocket animation, uh, you could maybe use a square root, and you get this kind of hard acceleration then it falls off in a kind of linear fashion. So over the next week or so, I'll go a little more into depth regarding the graph editor and I'll show you a few more tricks. Do me a favour, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the video. I'm trying to build the channel and it certainly helps. If not, peace.